the row method. Let's talk about that. Longer, the key is always longer than the longest message. Yep, you always, you never reuse any part of the key. The key has to be longer than the longest message. Yep, Acoran has got it. All right. Okay, good, good. Glad to see it. So let's talk about the row method. This actually answers something that always has puzzled me about password hashes. They don't just, when you see password hash cracks that use rainbow tables, they don't just try an A and a B and a C and a D and then an A and an AB and an AC like I would. They do hash and then they hash it again and hash it again. So they try all these random character strings. And the reason is they're doing this. This row method works like this. Suppose I'm doing repeated hashes, like I hash something, then I hash the hash, then I hash the hash over and over again. Well, all right, I can just draw it so I get different values. Now, eventually, I will get a number that repeats a number I've seen before. Eventually, one of these hashes will create a number, a hash I've seen before. And when that happens, I'm stuck in a loop forever. So this one, the number five hash, turned out to be equal to the number 11 hash. But when that happens, the next hash will clearly be the same as 6. You'll never move from here. So you have a sort of random walk through the hash values, and eventually you will find a loop, and then you stay in that loop forever. So the shape of this, conceptually, is like the Greek letter rho. This is called the rho method, and this is a way to find password collisions, a hash collisions. This is how you, this is turns out to be the computationally most efficient way to do this. So, yeah, I'm going to do this in immediate mode in Python. So I go Python 3. All right. And then I put in import hash lib and I calculate the MD5 of A. So this is, you take the input string here, you encode it with ASCII, then you take the MD5 hash of it here, and then you print out the hex version of that hash. So this is the good old MD5 hash which is 0cc and stuff. Okay, and you can verify it here with one of these online things that shows you an A is indeed 0cc, so I'm getting the right kind of hash. Now, I could try to find hash collisions of MD5, which do exist, but that would take forever. <laughs> That's really a long thing, so I'm going to truncate it. Um, so, instead of doing it that way, we take just the first two characters of it. And in Python, when you have a string like this, this hash lib hex digest is just a string of characters, and you can go minus two colon to get the last two characters, minus two to the end. So this would be a 61. So now I have found a way to create a one byte hash. All right. And is there a way to avoid this? You mean to avoid this row thing? Is that what you're asking? Uh, there is no way to avoid this, really, for any hash function. That's the fundamental point. Um, there's no way to avoid a hash collision. Every hash function always has collisions. This is really important. If you have a hash function, the hash function only has so many bits. Like if it's MD5, it has 128 bits. So there are more. If your input file is longer than 128 bits, there are more input files than there are possible hash values. So there are always, in principle, hash collisions. Even a sh like a SHA-512 is 512 bits. But if I feed in data that's 1024 bits, then eventually two of those files will have the same hash value. It's a fundamental principle that there are always hash collisions because the hash is only of a certain length and the input can be any length, which is longer. So what you want you cannot have an algorithm with no hash collisions. But what you can have is an algorithm where you, the hash collisions are so rare that you cannot find them in any reasonable amount of time. Oh, and I see a private message here. Let me see what that is. Uh-oh. The first repeated hash. Oh, I think I saw this one long ago. Oh, here's another one. Oh, oh, an ID. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, a name. Good, okay. Oh, I've got it down here, actually. Okay, good. Now I know who Woot is. Good? All right. All right. All right. And I realize I'm... Good, good. Anyway. So, uh... All right. So there is no way, to, in principle, to prevent... Every hash function has this property. There will eventually be a row. What you can do with something like SHA-512 is you make this tail so long that you can never get to the loop. That's all you can do. 
A very good point. So now I'm just going to calculate that here with the iterated hashing. So this is the one that will calculate a whole series of those one byte hashes. All right, so I start with an A, and now for 50, I'm going to just calculate H. I start with H equals A, then I calculate H by hashing H. And then I hash H again and again and again. So I'm going to keep taking the hex digest version of the hash and hashing it again and again. And so there they are, 61, 91, 94, EF, EF, 43. And I see a 1E here and a 1E here. So I've made it to where the loop is. And there's a 1E there. So I can just line them up by changing the width of the window. Except it's not wrapping. Now that's rude. <laughs> I thought it would wrap. But... Um, Right, there's the one E and there's the one E, so I need it a little bit skinnier yet. I'm going to put it in a text editor that will wrap. That's what I'm going to do. I don't know why my terminal window won't wrap, but my text editor will wrap. All right. There we go. There we are. One E, one E, one E. 21, 21, 21. So you can see they start repeating right from the start. The whole thing is just a loop, apparently. Because um, I didn't get them all. All right. They started with 6191. All right, let me just try this again. Um, you just put the whole thing in again. There. All right. So there's the whole list. Now I put it in something that will let me wrap it. All right, and here's one E, one E, one E. Okay, this is working. So it looks like the one E is where it starts repeating. The E, E does not repeat. So this is the block that repeats. That's the loop. And there's another turn of the loop. This is the tail leading up to the loop, and that's the loop. So that's the row. It took me one and a half lines to get to repeating, and then the repetition is one cycle of my screen here. Just add a new line at the end. Well, I could do that, but I'd have to keep moving it around, see? Oh, maybe a new line in the this thing here to make it loop. That could be it. You're probably right. Anyway, this worked. So that's the game here. And so now you can just start it with a different value and find out which one repeats, and then keep three characters, and then keep eight characters, and you'll find how it works. Yeah, well, my method, yeah, like all my stuff, my method is a sleazy workaround, you know. <laughs> it's <laughs> um, Anyway. This is, a, this is all hacker methods. You just try different techniques until something works. Anyway, <laughs> so that's the row method, and we'll be using this quite a lot in the future. In fact, some fancy uh, advanced things we'll use. We use this in some later projects. But this is the fundamental principle of hash collisions. All right, I think that's it for today.